guys, welcome back to another week of workouts. I'm excited. It's been a minute. We're back in motion. I kind of been switching things up a little bit. I just feel like I haven't been super rigid with my fitness routine. Like I really have just been enjoying moving my body, sticking with the basics. I still mainly hit legs twice a week with weight training. And then I lift weights for my upper body once a week. And then I'll do like a long walk or like a hike. And I've really been loving yoga once a week, or maybe I'll do an at-home Pilates video. Kind of been sprinkling running like once every 10 days. So I wish I could tell you guys I have like a solidified split right now, but the fact of the matter is I just don't. But I honestly like it that way. I just feel like it just hasn't been as super rigid. And I just have kind of been flowing and vibing and I've still been working out, moving my body like anywhere from four to six days a week. And I've just been loving it. I've been feeling really good. I don't really have major physique goals right now. Again, I'm more so training for my health and to feel good and just to be moving my body and like celebrate movement. I am also a certified personal trainer. I have been one since like 2018 now. I have been lifting for about six years. So I definitely have had my fair share of experience and was always an athlete throughout school and all that good stuff. So basically I'm going to be taking you guys through every single workout this week. And I'm also going to be sharing with you guys how to do each weightlifting exercise. So make sure that you're getting the most out of it and have correct form when you're performing. Just work it on your own. And also all the workouts will also be written down below in the description box, as well as the outfits that I'm wearing every day. My outfit today is so freaking cute. You guys, I don't think I've ever made this color combination. I'm obsessed with it. And I literally match like down to my shoes. It's so freaking cute. All elf fleet, of course. All right, let's get into it. This workout's actually a mic'd up workout, but for some reason I didn't feel like talking during my warm up, so I'm coming at you with the voiceover. But so I always still am starting with my foam rollers. You guys, again, if you're regular on my channel, I just want to say I'm sorry because my my mobility routine has literally not changed in the past year. But you know what? Don't fix what ain't broken. You know what I'm saying? It also helps to get me in the zone when I just have my same routine. I don't need to think about it and I can just get to it, you know? So, anyways, I always like to roll on the foam roller a little bit, get the back nice and loose. It cracks my back and I just really focus on having my spine like melt over the roller and then I like to flip over and this is great for opening up my shoulder sockets and just getting some mobility and rotation in my crunchy freaking shoulders why did my why are my shoulders so crunchy do you know what I'm saying I know some of you are late it's like I don't know why it's freaking crunching and cracking in there as I'm doing that Anyway, today I started with my favorite, the good old world's greatest stretch. You're essentially bringing one hand up to one of your hands. Then you're basically going to drop that same side's elbow down to the ground. I promise if you're feeling really tight, that's going to feel very hard to do. Like when my groin and my inner thighs are sore, it's so hard for me to touch the ground. But then you're going to aim to touch the ground and then you're going to rotate up towards the sky, getting a nice twist in your upper back, in your spine. Open up those shoulders to the sky. You also can rock on the outside of your working leg heel as well to help deepen a glute stretch and then after you twist up to the sky you're going to rock back on that same working legs heel to get a nice dynamic hamstring stretch as well and you're basically going to be alternating back and forth I usually do anywhere between three to five reps on each side then from there, I did some really low lateral lunges. This always feels so good for opening up my hips. A lot of my mobility routine before leg day involves a lot of hip openers because I personally have really tight hips. I really still always think back to when I just didn't do warm ups and I just like bone millet mobility work, I should say. And I just don't know how I lived because it was just so important for me to be able to have a greater range of motion and just have each of these movements that we're going to get into today feels so much more fluid. So if you skip your warm up, you're going to jail, sister. Okay, definitely don't skip your warm up. It's so worth taking five minutes just to get some blood flow and help you work through that full range of motion. So then I did some in high school, we called these C steps, actually. <laughs> basically, you're just basically pretending like you're stepping over a hurdle. And I do about five each direction. So one in towards my body and then one away from my body. And then I just did some ankle circles because I felt like it. But that's literally it. That's my warm up. Takes anywhere between like five to eight minutes. No time at all. All right, dogs. First exercise of the twerk out. First exercise of this whole entire video. We're going to start off with the leg press machine. I've kind of been liking it lately. I don't know why. I just get in the zone with it and I really enjoy it. My first at least two exercises, first two to three exercises in the workout, I'm always doing a warm up set beforehand. I don't even know how to describe it, but like in the beginning of my fitness journey, I never did warm ups and now I like physically can't go without it. Like it helps so much with my power output, getting, making sure I have blood flow and really making sure I can go through the full range of motion when I actually have a lot of weight on here. So I'm just starting off with a plate and I don't do anything crazy. I'll do like five to eight reps. We're not trying to pre-fatigue the muscles here. Again, we're just trying to go through the range of motion, physically get our body warm and get some blood flowing. 
In terms of form, there's a lot of different variations and varieties that you could do to perform this work, this exercise specifically, because foot placement plays such a big role. For me, I like to just stick with the pretty standard stance or about shoulder width apart. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of a toes pointed out situation, which I kind of feel like doing today. Why not? And I'm always going to be driving up through my heels and I'm never going to let my knees lock out at any time in the exercise, especially when I'm keeping the weight up here. It's just going to be a dangerous place to put your knees in and then you're also going to put more stress on your knees. So I always have a very slight bend in my leg here and I'm constantly going to be driving my knees out throughout the whole exercise and not letting them cave in. And especially when I come down, I'm driving my knees out to my side and I'm driving up through my heel. Another huge thing is I'm being very mindful of how far I'm bringing my feet in because if you bring them in too much where your lower back and your butt's going to curl off the pad, I tend to just have a lot of stress in my low back and then my low back is like insanely sore the next day. So I really try to keep my stomach, my belly button really pressed into my spine, core nice and tight, lower back completely pressed into the seat. And I really just listen to my range of motion. Nine. 10. 12. That means we're going up in weight, boys. Next, we're gonna go into a hip hinge movement. It's an RDL, which we all know I love RDLs, but we're doing a different variation of them because sometimes I get sick of a normal barbell and sometimes I get sick of normal dumbbells. So this is gonna be with the landmine bar. So if you're not unfamiliar with what that is, it's basically, if you've ever seen this in the corner of the gym, this is what we're gonna be using. We're basically gonna be putting this in there and then it basically moves kind of at an angle. So this is gonna be the range of motion. And then it kind of just gives you, it adds like a different dimension to the movement, kind of different leverage, just kind of hits the muscle in a different angle. I really like it. And then we're gonna be using this little V-bar attachment as well. Just gonna hook it under the barbell. So it just is way easier to grip it. This has been life-changing ever since I started to do this. Basically, here's a tutorial for the landmine. We're just gonna take your dumbbell, your barbell, I mean, and put it in the little hole. And then now basically it's kind of like a lever. And pro tip, I would say you wanna use like smaller plates rather than these big normal like deadlifting bumper plates just because it helps you have greater range of motion, therefore more time under tension. So like I said, this here is a hip hinging movement, meaning you wanna initiate the movement by pushing your hips back. I think a lot of people always think the cue is just to fold over and like bend over. The whole point here is to get a stretch in your hamstrings and your glutes, so what we're, that's what we're trying to hit here. So in order to do that, we're gonna push our hips back to get a nice big stretch in our hamstrings and our glutes. So with that, we want to keep our torso nice and flat. I always say to pretend like there's a board strapped to your spine. There should be no movement, right? I'm not doing this and I'm not arching my back. It's nice and flat and this literally should be stationary throughout the whole entire exercise. I have a slight bend in my knee as I fold forward again to protect my knee. We don't want to be doing this. If you want to hit more glute and less hamstring, you can bend your knee a little bit more. That's going to get a little bit bigger stretch in your hamstring and less, I mean, excuse me, a bigger stretch in your glute and less stretch in your hamstring. And then the whole time you basically want to be driving up through your heels and squeezing your glutes and through your hamstrings and you want to keep your neck nice in line with your spine so I'm going to put this right here under the barbell and then basically pushing those hips back and extending up and driving up through my heels play around with your foot placement in regards to your position in reference to the barbell because like I said it's a little bit of a different angle so you may need to bring your feet closer to the weights farther away from the weights in order for this movement to feel very comfortable but something about this gets my glutes like crazy. And this handle attachment makes it so much freaking easier to hold because the barbell always used to slip out of my hands. Oh my gosh, my glutes are burning. Another huge thing here, I see this with regardless whether you're using a dumbbell or a barbell, you don't want to come up and drive your hips forward. That just puts a lot of stress on your low back. So you basically want to come up until your pelvis is neutral again. If you were to look from the side, I'm not driving it forward. I'm basically coming up and stopping when it's neutral. And there's tension on my glutes, but I don't need to drive it forward, especially because the hardest part of this movement is when it's stretched at the bottom of the RDL. So it's not as major of a thing to have to squeeze your glutes and shove your hips forward. This just isn't an exercise that yields that. So next I'm moving into Smith Machine reverse lunges. I feel like I've been doing step ups a lot and I've been kind of craving 
doing just a normal reverse lunge. I always prefer reverse lunges rather than a forward lunge because it just is so much more glute focused because you have to shift so much weight onto your heel rather than coming down to your toe. So a huge thing is gonna be your foot placement and how far back you go into the lunge. So I always say to sit back and down into the lunge. And now as you can see, my knee is gonna be stacked over my ankle and my shin is pretty vertical and that's gonna create the biggest glute stretch. You don't have to do it this way. This is just gonna be a more glute focused reverse lunge, which is always my goal. So when you do that, I have also have a little slight forward torso lean. This is also creating a bigger glute stretch as well. You can see the common theme here. You wanna maximize the stretch in your muscles. Then we're gonna be driving up through that front leg's heel. We don't wanna be pushing off the back, right? We don't wanna be using momentum. We wanna be controlling the lowering portion and then driving up through our heel for the raising portion as well. And since the Smith machine usually tends to be angled back, I like to kick my foot a little bit forward so it's not directly underneath me. This just helps me get that foot placement to have my knee be stacked over my ankle at the bottom of the lunge right there. I'm feeling strong today. I could definitely do more weight. Okay, so I just did 15 reps with only 10 more pounds. That's how you know you have more to push. We all knew this was coming at some point in the workout. So we're now moving into hip thrust, except kind of switching up. We're doing it on the Smith machine. This here, since it's later in the workout, this is our fourth compound movement now. This is mainly more so for volume to get a pump, to get a nice squeeze. I'm not going crazy heavy here. This is more so just for more volume for reps, just to get some more stimulus on the muscle. And I do have a little mini band around right above my knee to help hit our glute medius and minimus, the two smaller muscles, kind of just to help get more stimulus in the lateral plane to help round out the booty. And this also helps to make sure that you're keeping your knees out the whole time throughout each rep. So similar to what I said with those reverse lunges, you want to position your feet so that they're stacked right underneath your knee when you lock out completely at the top of this movement. So your knee should be stacked over your ankle. There should be a 90 degree angle if your knee. If not, your foot's going to be either too far out from your butt or too close to your butt. And that's going to prevent you from feeling it where you should be which is in your glutes here you also don't want to be driving up with your belly button to the sky and having your head fall back you want your head to be tucked to your chin and you want to picture yourself scooping up with your hips rather than just driving up with your belly button so you want to tuck your belly button in tilt your pelvis back if you will and then squeeze your glutes up to the top and it's super important to make sure that you're completely locked out at the top of the movement try to push your hips all the way up as high as you can towards the sky Wow. Oh man. Also crucial tip, the bottom of your shoulder blade should be what's on the bench. You don't want to be too high up, you're also not going to have good range of motion. And you don't want to be too far off the bench or else you're going to constantly feel like you're falling off and you're going to have no leverage. This is where I'm tired and I'm trapped and I don't know if I should go over the bar or under the bar. Finally, we're gonna finish off with some cable lateral kicks. This is basically completely kicking out directly to the side of you. This is to hit the glute medius and minimus, this upper outer portion of your glute. If it helps, put your hand there just because it helps with mind to muscle connection. For sure, just because it's a smaller muscle, so it just helps a lot. So I like to step over the cable. I have a little bit of a forward torso lean here. My core is nice and tight. I'm not arching or curving my back. Just a really sturdy spine bent over. I'm keeping a slight bend in both legs here, and this is where you should be feeling it. And I'm basically kicking out directly to my side. Happy Tuesday, you guys. My camera high key died yesterday at the end of the workout, but it really was such a good workout. I needed it because my last leg day before that one sucked, so it was so good. I'm feeling sore and tender from yesterday's workout, which is really good. I'm feeling really good. It's super rainy right now, so it's like very dark 
in here just in the vicinity but anyway so we're gonna go hit upper body and i've been wearing this little well basically let's put it this way at first i thought like active wear dresses and skirts were for like when you're going for a walk or playing tennis or like just kind of low intensity movement like something i would never wear in the gym and i wore this skirt into the gym and then also my active wear dress from set active and it's like i can't go back like i oh, always for upper body though i'm not crazy I'm not using it for legs but it's kind of cute and then i like love it because i like feel so like girly and strong and like in my feminine power by lifting like in a skirt so i personally love it okay it's kind of for a little warm-up i need to just i feel the need to extend stretch myself so i'm gonna do a little dead, dead hang to start off Oh, and decompress my spine. So for my warm up today, it's not super extensive. I basically just did dead hangs and then it's kind of some, I forget what they're called, basically just shoulder rotations while I was hanging up there. And now I'm gonna do a warm up set here. So that essentially just means I'm gonna be using lighter weight than normal and doing anywhere between like eight to 10 reps just to get some blood flow and get into the proper range of motion here. We are doing a little bit of a different exercise here. Shout out to my boyfriend for showing me this. But we have the V-bar attachment and we're basically gonna flip it around. So we have both hands on one side of the handle. This is just gonna get our hands closer together. And we're basically just gonna be driving our elbows down to the ground dropping your shoulders away from the ears and squeezing your back. some chest work we're gonna do that was like British slash Australian I don't even know what that was we're gonna do some chest work like I said on the incline bench and we're gonna use some dumbbells and essentially we're gonna do alternating chest press on the incline bench I'm going pretty heavy white for me usually I don't lift very heavy on my chest Lady interruption <laughs> yeah. Oof. Okay, here we go. Why does this feel so heavy? It's only 25 pounds. So essentially for this exercise, we're gonna be alternating, like I said, so we're bringing one dumbbell down at a time. Now with a dumbbell press, this feels so heavy. I'm coming down at a 45 degree angle from my side. This is gonna help protect your shoulder joint. Oh, make sure you have a nice, good, stable base with your legs as well. Root those into the floor. And you should be feeling this in your chest and also in the front of your shoulder. I haven't even been close to counting anything. That was intense. Can you say Happy National Girlfriend's Day to the video? Happy, happy National Girlfriend Day. I want it first. Happy National Girlfriend Day. That's the quality we like here, gals. Oh, guys, don't you think this would be such a good idea? I want to have a workout with, with <laughs> me and Laddie switching each other. Like, I want to listen to his workout playlist, and I want him to listen to what I work out to. I feel like that'd be so fun and just interesting. You know what I mean? I'm so curious to hear about, like, hear what other people listen to during the workout, especially Laddie. Yes. <laughs> well, wait, I can't vouch for this song that's playing. Because this is on a random shuffle. We're going to switch earphones. I feel like I don't know this man. This is what you listen to when you work out? Ooh. Is this Jordan Lucas? No. Wait, let me guess. Oh, and I have, yeah. What song is this by him? Suffice. Okay, Laddie, you passed the vibe check. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting it. You can have yours back. Now I feel embarrassed by my song choice. I'm not gonna lie, my boyfriend is such a closet good music taste like you would never expect it and it's super low-key like every single song he plays i'm like that's actually was a banger anyways now we're gonna move into another back exercise we're gonna do a single arm horizontal row here oh this one feels so good such a great big stretch here i love how big the range of motion is so same thing dropping those shoulders away from our ears to engage your lats we're squeezing our lats and basically driving this handle till right towards our rib cage you really want to make sure that you're not using momentum you want to mitigate that as much as possible and we don't want too much rotation in our torso as well right i'm not doing this and like cranking it i'm trying to stay pretty square but also hold honing in on that squeeze when our muscles are in that shortened position in that peak contraction 
I all of a sudden just got so hungry. This has been one of my favorite variations of a lateral raise lately, just because it spices it up and I actually really like doing upper body work on the cables. So this is a kind of a deficit cable lateral raise. This is gonna help increase the range of motion and time under tension. So it's really good once you're basically gonna hold on to the pull, lean out a little bit, and then pull up this cable out to your side. Slight bend in the arm as always to protect the elbow. And I'm stopping when my fist comes just about parallel with the ground. And you kind of want to be leading with your elbow with the top of your hand. And that's going to help you with the cue to help squeeze the sides of your shoulders to get this weight up. Oh, all of it. The burn of your shoulders here is something different. All right, now we're moving into some bicep work, getting in some more isolation movements as we get further into the workout. So this is like a squatted preacher's curl kind of variation on the cable machine. This I really love just because it is super isolating for the biceps and it like forces you to eliminate momentum. Like there's no way to use momentum here. So essentially I'm gonna squat. I have my elbows on my knees and I'm basically just trying to bring my thumbs to my forehead by squeezing my biceps. And something about this one is so good. And it really makes you embrace your core too. 11. Last one's gonna be a negative. 12. Slow release. Whew. Now for a tricep exercise. I haven't done this in ages either, but this is just another variation of a tricep extension on the cable machine essentially we're going across our body in a diagonal so essentially i'm just staying completely perpendicular to the cable and so now my arm is obviously across my body and i'm basically just going to bring the bottom of my fist down to the ground and squeezing my tricep so it's a little bit of a different range of motion here i also feel like my shoulders are engaged as well just resisting the cable because my body wants to twist over to it it also recruits a little bit of your abs as well for stability again i'm making sure all other parts of my body are nice and stable and tight the only movement here is my forearm my elbow is still nice and stationary tight we don't want any momentum here and we don't want any other muscles taking over this movement my shoulders are down away from my ears all right, lastly, we're gonna finish off with another isolation exercise for our rear delts, which is essentially here in the back of our shoulders. It does such an amazing job of just kind of rounding out and cuffing your shoulders. You can use the attachment if you want, but I'm just grabbing the cable directly. We're basically gonna bend over. I have a really flat back. I'm basically keeping a nice, long, neutral spine. And I'm basically standing perpendicular to the cable, and I'm basically just bringing out my wrist up to the sky. This one is such a great isolation movement for that rear delt. So we're sticking with 10 to 12 exercise. I mean, totally 10 to 12 reps for only three sets, two sets, excuse me. Clearly I'm tired. 11, 12, Elphine, Elphine. All right, good job guys. I will talk to you tomorrow. Hello you guys, happy Wednesday. So for my third day of the week, I usually like to spend this day away from weight training because we had two sessions back to back and I usually spend this outside of the gym, this day outside of the gym, depending on weather of course. And usually I'll traditionally opt for just like a long walk because it is always so good for my mental health and I love incorporating just really low intensity workouts into my training as well or i'll do pilates so just basically any sort of low impact training i like to do on this third day it is currently raining right now unfortunately and if i die i just was procrastinating today and if i got my workout in earlier i would have been able to go for a walk but now it's raining and i didn't really realize it was going to rain like this today so i'm going to opt for an at-home pilates session and last week of workouts video i tried to like come up with my own pilates workout for you and it was so good i liked the workout myself like 100 percent. it just was so hard to like try to explain concisely what I did like without it having been like a follow along workout video in its entirety you know so we're just gonna keep it nice and simple okay I'm just gonna follow along another move with Nicole on um, Pilates video I personally opt for that anyways because it's just so nice being able to just like follow what she's doing and obviously she knows way more than me about Pilates but usually it's anywhere between like a 30 minute to 45 minute max of an at-home Pilates workout when I do do one and ideally I would have liked to pair this with like a 30 minute walk outside but again it's raining so, but to make this nice and fun and fresh and nice, 
we are gonna do this on the balcony outside in the rain. I did that when I was in Costa Rica and it was so relaxing just to like be able to hear the raindrops. So we're gonna do this outside. So this is the one that I'm deciding to do. It's a 40 minute full body workout. I can use resistance bands, but I'm honestly not gonna because I'm hitting legs tomorrow and usually her workouts are challenging enough for me. The point of this is just to have, again, low impact movement, but I'm not trying to like kill myself and have like a really challenging workout. Done. I'm gonna be honest, I definitely should have grabbed a resistance band. It was still like challenging, but not nearly as hard as her workouts normally are for me because she definitely didn't design it to have appropriate difficulty once you had a mini band. So even though it's optional, I definitely, if you're gonna do this one, I definitely recommend using a mini band. I just personally really have been loving Pilates, like incorporating it into my routine because I just feel like, especially now the older I get and the more that I'm in my fitness journey, like I just wanna feel good. Like I was so invested in how I looked all the time and like if that's your number one priority right now is to like simply you wanna just weight train to look a certain way and like really be, like have all that muscle mass, like all the power to you. I did go through that phase so I'm not trying to like demonize it. I just feel like now I'm more, much more like I see more of the bigger picture and I want a more balanced approach to how I look and how I feel and I feel like Pilates is a great way for me to do that and I feel like it's such a great way for me to get movement in every day, well not every single day but often throughout the week because I love getting movement and it makes me feel so great mentally but without over stressing my body which was a huge problem for me in the past which really messed up my hormones so i love using this as a tool throughout my weeks to get movement in but still being mindful of my hormones i also love that it's what i call mindful movement there's so much breath work intertwined with it so it's very meditative for me i like that i can get breath work in while i'm moving my body and it's also been a great way for me to work on my ab strength and body weight strength and just like control with my ab muscles because i usually not someone who trains them on their own i will sometimes in my full body circuits that i do like for functional training but overall i just feel so dang good when i'm incorporating pilates yoga walks all that good stuff in my routine i am gonna go for a really short like 15 minute walk though because it did stop raining and i just was so sedentary today like so sedentary editing all day long so i'm gonna do that and then i'll be all done for my movement for the day Hello you guys, happy Thursday. Today is another leg day for me. We're all about hitting legs twice a week. Usually that's non-negotiable for me, no matter what I'm changing my workouts with. I always do legs twice a week because I'm really about upkeeping my booty gains, you know what I'm saying? I do have my OxyShed with me today. It's like 1.30 in the afternoon. Usually I have non-stim OxyShed, which just means it's caffeine free because I usually work out in the evening. But I also didn't want to do like full caffeinated version today because 1.30 is still like kind of like, like usually I don't have caffeine unless it's like before noon or like 11 a.m. Like I like to have my caffeine early. 
really because I'm very caffeine sensitive. But so I decided to do half a scoop of caffeinated in the passion flute flavor, which is my favorite. And then another half a scoop in non-stim version in the strawberry sunrise flavor, which is also my favorite flavor in the non-stim version. Mix those, added collagen and some trace minerals just for some added hydration and mineral repletion. And collagen, obviously, for hair, skin, and nail health. And it actually tastes so freaking good. Like, I love the flavor combo and I'm already feeling it. I'm already feeling super energized. <laughs> I freaking love OxyShed. If you're new here, this is old news. But I love OxyShed so much because I use it specifically as a pre-workout. So I usually like to take it before my leg days. And it just helps so freaking much with making me mentally focused in the gym. My mind-to-muscle connection is always, like, through the roof. It's just always so much better. It helps to enhance my performance. Like, I always feel like that's when I can really go heavy on hip thrust. When I'm taking this, I feel like I can push myself harder in the gym and... And it gives me like an energy boost and it always makes me hyper and like puts me in the best mood and usually like I said I'm pretty sensitive to caffeine and like other pre-workouts usually leaves me like anxious or gives me like jitters or like feels like my heart's beating out of my chest none of that you don't get a crash don't get the jitters don't get anything it's so freaking good and even some of the girls on my retreat who have tried this said to me like in person how much they love oxyshed and I was like thank you I know it's a miracle worker so you could use code lipid 10 if you want to try it out for yourself and save some money so for our first exercise so we're gonna do a little bit of a variation here. I already did a warm up set of just one set of like eight ish reps, but now we're gonna do one and one fourth reps or one and a quarter reps. So basically, you're gonna come down, do one full range of motion all the way down to the bottom, come up, lock out at the top, and then go down a quarter of the way and come back up. So you're basically doing one full rep plus a quarter of a rep, and that's gonna count as one. So we're gonna shoot for four sets of anywhere between eight to 10 reps here. I already did a set and I'm dying. I forgot how good these are. So all the way down, up, quarter rep, back up, that's one. You guys, that is so hard. That's wiping me out today. To review form, even though we touched base on it at the beginning of the week, basically you have the bench right underneath my shoulder blades. I scrunch my feet up kind of to where my, the crease in my knee would be when my feet are all the way out. That way, so then when I lift up, my knees are about stacked over my ankle. My shins are nice and vertical and there's a 90 degree angle in your knee. That's how you're gonna ensure to feel it actually in your glutes. You want your chin to be tucked to your chest. That's gonna help tilt our pelvis back and that inevitably causes more glute engagement. So that's gonna help you feel it more. And then in terms of a cue, I'm literally so winded. <laughs> you don't wanna be leading up to the sky with your belly button, right? And letting your head fall back. So you wanna keep your chin tucked and I'm basically scooping my hips up to the sky and I'm tucking my belly button in towards my spine rather than leading with my belly button, right? So my belly button's nice and tucked. I'm kind of rotating my pelvis back and then I'm scooping up like an ice cream scooper up to the top. And another really important thing, you wanna make sure you're locking out as fully as you can at the top of the movement. You wanna push your hips as high up to the sky as you can. You ideally wanna hit a tabletop position. My glutes are gluting right now though. All right, for our second exercise, I'm so winded today, you guys. We're going into Bulgarian split squats. I am using wrist straps. Mine are linked down below in my Amazon storefront if you wanna get these, they're so good. Just because the Velcro is really strong and I love the grip on the inside. But I use these because my glutes and legs are way stronger than my grip strength. So usually I find myself being able to do more reps if I have these on because otherwise I feel like I'm gonna drop the weights before my legs are actually fatigued. So these help so much. So in terms of form, very similar to those reverse lunges that we did on Monday, I'm basically positioning my legs so that when I come down into the, the lunge, right, I say come back and down into the lunge, it's a diagonal range of motion. Now my knee is stacked over my ankle again, my shin is nice and vertical, and now all my weight is in my heels. I'm bending over slightly with my torso. All of this is creating a bigger stretch in our glutes, which is what we're trying to target here, our glutes and our quad and our inner thigh. Then we're gonna shoot up through our heels. A lot of people picture it as they're coming up and down, but you see when I do that, now I lose that angle in my shin. Right now my knee is coming more towards my toe and my shin is not vertical. That's what I mean when I say a vertical shin. So we wanna basically shift this whole framework back. So that's what I mean when you come down, I'm not crashing straight up and down vertical. It's an escalator coming back. I have a nice big stretch, I'm leaning forward and then we're coming up this way, right? So I'm sinking back and down and up. 
So it's kind of a two-way thing. I'm coming down as I'm bringing my hips backwards. A little pro tip is to put your feet on the bench first, come down, pick up the weight so you know how far to stand away from the bench, then bring your feet together and then stand up with the weight. I'm sweating and I'm dying in the last tray. That's just like, a, it's a good pain today. All right, since I am kind of short on time today, I'm just gonna move into a dumbbell sumo squat here. So for this sumo squat position, feet are wider than shoulder width apart and my toes are pointed out at about a 45 degree angle. And then just kind of a normal squat, pretending like you're sitting back and down into a chair. Something I'm working on, because I have really tight hip flexors, I tend to really bend over my torso a lot, which isn't necessarily like, not at risk for injury, but it's not ideal, it's not pretty form. So ideally try to keep your torso a little bit more upright. And that's also gonna help you get more depth actually in your legs, rather than just compensating and leaning over and then losing range of motion. And just as always, we wanna be driving up through our heels and squeezing our glutes. Oh yeah, that's enough. <laughs> so next we're gonna finish off with a little superset. The first portion is gonna be some hamstring work because we haven't really done much at all this workout thus far. So this is a lying hamstring curl. To spice it up though, we're gonna do five second negatives. So that means we're gonna bring the weight up and then when we bring down the weight, it should take us five seconds to bring the weight back down. So we're basically slowing down the lowering portion to increase time under tension. And to come up, then one, two, three, four, five, and we're down. So we're basically gonna be doing this back to back with the leg curl. This is a plated side kick. We're trying to hit our glute medius up here to help round out our booty and give it some more shape and train in the lateral plane. So you're gonna wanna hold on to something and I have a 25 pound plate here and I'm essentially just putting it right on the outside of my thigh. The important thing here is I'm not trying to like compensate the weight by pulling it up with my bicep. I'm just trying to plan it so it's stationary against my outside of my thigh. So you're basically just gonna be kicking out to the side and you're gonna be resisting the weight of this plate on the outside of your leg and I'm trying to sweep my knee up to the sky. You can add a band. I haven't decided if I wanna do that yet but you can pop a band as well on the tops of your knees, especially if you don't want to add weight yet, and you can just stay here as well, or you could do this with the weight on your side. Hello, you guys. Happy Friday. I was in a rush yesterday after my workout because I had a meeting like directly after, so I didn't have time to catch up with you guys afterwards but it was such a freaking good workout i felt freaking phenomenal i felt so strong i felt like superwoman and it was just such a good workout and i just was needing that like those are the days that make me love working out and training because i felt so good and i just was really pushing myself and i was really happy with the weight i was using and everything it just was a freaking amazing leg day so highly recommend that workout i am currently very sore especially my inner thighs from those bulgarians like everything just feels tender and tight and this morning my boyfriend and I got up early and we went on a little hike, which I loved. It wasn't super long. It took us probably like 40-ish minutes of actually like moving 
hiking up and hiking back down. Probably it's like maybe a couple miles. I'm not really sure. It didn't take super long though. It wasn't a crazy long hike. So now I'm just going for a walk and just getting a little more steps in only for about like 20 minutes. Usually this is the day that I would do like my Friday full body circuits. But like I said, I'm feeling pretty sore and I am pretty tired because we did get up early and my cousins are also coming into town. So this is why I love having flexibility in my workout split and like I don't get as stressed out as I used to if like I need to if I have to miss a day because I can just move everything around. Happy Saturday you guys. Today is yoga day. There's a free outdoor yoga class in my town at like the base of the ski mountain and it is so beautiful and it is so relaxing and this is like my fourth week going now so I've been going consistently for a month which woohoo and I've been loving yoga obviously just because it's great to help me stretch and help with my mobility and I also love this instructor which I feel so thankful for because like I said it's a free class and like she's very spiritual and she always makes the class like centered around a theme which I really love like last week was all around your dark which is like your life purpose so there's a lot of like symbolism in the poses that we do and stuff which I really love and dude I am freaking tight still from that leg day like I am sore today I'm more sore than yesterday because it's day two so I'm really hoping like I'm really trying to use this as like a stretching period happy Sunday. I'm just now realizing that this is like the first time in such a long time I've done like a full week of workouts for the whole seven days because usually traditionally I don't really work out. I don't like intentionally do anything on Saturday and Sunday. I really only have just been doing yoga traditionally but I don't really see that as like I just see that as kind of like restorative movement kind of like an active rest day I guess if you will. So it kind of feels weird that I am filming this into that I'm even here on a Sunday but anyways we're gonna go in and do my functional full body circuit. Usually I do these on Friday this is a day that I like to do just because it really helps me feel athletic and it really helps me with my cardiovascular system cardiovascular system and just to be honest with y'all I haven't been doing this so I'm honestly a little bit nervous to be going in here and doing this I just introduced it like I've been doing this every week I really haven't been doing this consistently like literally since before Costa Rica if I'm being honest so I am gonna feel a little bit out of shape, but I know that I really need to reintroduce this again because I have been going for runs like every once every 10 days here and there. And I was really winded and like in my light days, I've been feeling really winded. So I do like having this in as like my one cardio kind of component during my week. And this focus is really more so on like agility, balance, just more athleticism. I'm not trying to lift really heavy weights. I do more so like body weight movements and stuff like that and do them more for time based rather than rep based. Alrighty, so to warm up for this type of workout, I always really like to jump rope. I think jump roping is such an underrated just form of movement in general, plus a little bit of cardio. Like, trust me, this will get your heart rate up. It gets your body warm very quickly, and it's such a great form of cardio to help work on athleticism and footwork. Like, I just feel so athletic and more agile and quick on my feet when I'm incorporating jump rope. So I love having this in about like once a week for a warm up, and it's great for this style of training that we're about to get into today. So, like I said, we're going to be doing a functional base exercises meaning that we're not focusing more so on weight but we're focusing primarily on things like agility speed power balance that sort of stuff to make us a more well-rounded athlete so i kept this one nice and simple and i kept it so we have 30 seconds of working time with 30 seconds of rest to keep things nice and simple so you don't need to count for reps for any of these exercises Starting off, we have alternating BOSU ball jump squats. These make the legs burn like crazy. I don't know if it's because of the balance and stability factor with the BOSU ball, but my legs get crazy 
they they burn with this one so don't underestimate it basically i'm just doing a jump squat and i'm kind of as i pop up i'm pivoting and putting my other foot on the ball where the other foot used to be keep your core nice and tight and make sure you're getting as low as possible and really explode out up from the bottom of your squat a little tip is to also make sure that your weight stays in your heels rather than pushing off your toes on the bosu ball that will help with some more stability then we're moving into a little push-up complex so basically we're using a bosu ball and some little razors for this push-up to create a little bit of a deficit and then also with that instability factor of the bosu ball it's also going to recruit more core strength and balance which is great and so essentially for the little spider crunches we're basically just bringing our knee to elbow and it's kind of coming out more so directly from your side to hit more of your obliques you want to keep that core nice and tight and you want to basically suck your belly button to your spine and you want to make sure that your butt isn't you know popping up or sagging down you want to stay in a really nice tight line and keep that core nice and tight then from there, I moved into one of my favorite little complexes. It's basically like a reverse lunge to a step up, to an overhead press, to a knee drive. It's kind of a lot going on, but it's just this is just a great all around full body movement, especially recruiting balance here as well. So you're going down into a reverse lunge, stepping up with the opposite leg, and then driving that knee to the sky as you're pushing those dumbbells up. So we have our shoulders engaged, our legs engaged, our core engaged, our inner thigh, our, a lot of things going on here. So it's really great. And then basically you just want Want to switch at the halfway mark so you're going to be doing about 15 seconds on one leg and 15 seconds on the other and make sure that you're driving through your heel as well when you step up onto the bench then this was actually my first time doing this exercise it's kind of a little spin-off of my speed skaters if you're a regular on my channel you know i do these often but usually those speed skaters i use for explosivity with here this is more so for balance so i have one of these slightly weighted little tube things this is definitely optional you don't need one to do the exercise but you're essentially just going to be laterally jumping from side to side and as you can tell i'm not putting that non-working leg on the ground right so that's where the stability and the balance factor comes in you want to explode to the side really explode from your glute and your quad and you want to try to be able to remain balanced when you land on the other leg and you want to be bringing your opposite hand down with that little tube if you have one of those at your gym then I did some good old ball slams these are just great if you have any sort of anger or frustration or you just have a lot of energy to get out you want to feel very powerful these are so freaking good so I recommend doing a ball that is meant for this that kind of has like sand in it so it just will kind of plop down to the ground and ideally won't make a ton of noise but this is a essentially a great one for power. Again, you really want to use your core here. So I like to bring my belly button to my spine and I focus on almost doing a mini crunch when I'm throwing that ball down. And I promise you're going to get a ton of core activation if you really brace your core in order to swing your arms to get that ball down. Then I did some gorilla rows. This is a little bit more so strength based, but I like the dynamic movement of this as you alternate hands. Basically have a nice athletic stance in your legs. I have a tabletop position with my back. My spine is nice and long and flat. And then I basically drive my hand to my hips if you will by squeezing my lats and my back and I'm just alternating each hand as I go throughout the 30 seconds then again of course just a reminder you're resting for 30 seconds in between each one of these exercises then I always like to finish off with abs so this I don't even have a name for this it's kind of I guess like a Russian twist with the dumbbell but like going higher up here so you're basically just going to be switching back and forth again keeping that belly button to your spine a big thing here is you don't want to let your stomach kind of like bubble i'm keeping my stomach very flat because again i'm drawing my belly button in and i'm keeping my stomach nice and flat and sucking in kind of in a way as i'm rotating side to side and again remember that you want to bring there should be rotation in your torso as well not just bring your arm side to side these are some bench up and overs Again, keeping that core nice and tight to my spine and I'm using my hands just for guidance here, but I'm not pushing off with my hands. Again, the majority of the work is coming from crunching up with our abs. I highly recommend using a timer for this workout. I use an app called the Interval Timer. It is free on the App Store. All right, you guys, I'm finally finished with my week of workouts. That workout was actually really good. It wasn't too much like on my cardiovascular system, but I'm. it was really good in the sense that it was very balanced. Like I feel like we did a lot of balance work mixed with explosivity. We did some unilateral work. I just feel like it was kind of a mix between everything, some strength. So it was a very diverse workout, which I love to keep us nice and athletic. And I feel like it was a good kind of little intro for me to get back into them. I feel like it's good that this one wasn't super big on your cardiovascular as of now. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video 
video. If you did like it and you want to see more weekend workouts from me, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you wanted to let me know your thoughts, what you liked, didn't like about the video, definitely let me know down below in the comments because it really helps me with my videos. And if you want to see more videos from me in general, definitely don't forget to subscribe because I have new videos going up every single week, every Tuesday and Friday. I'm sending you so much freaking love and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Peace out. I'm dying. <gasps> I'm sweating.